from both my literature review and my personal experience over most of the AIDS, so-called AIDS centers in Africa, I can find absolutely no believable, persuasive evidence that Africa is in the midst of a new epidemic of infectious immunodeficiency. Dr. Harvey Bialy, who has lived and worked in Africa, is deeply skeptical of any current AIDS claims about the continent. Those claims are just that. They are based on uh, no real evidence whatsoever. Uh, in fact, the evidence uh, could not really exist because mortality figures for the continent of Africa have never been kept as uh, matters of record by the governments, even within hospitals. Uh, these figures are extraordinarily difficult to come by. One group that is being closely observed is the prostitutes of Abidjan. Research shows a much higher incidence of HIV than in the rest of the population. Some of the women have been falling seriously ill and some have died. But prostitution often goes hand in hand with hard drugs. And Abidjan's recent tourist boom has helped finance an escalating drugs problem. As yet, there's no useful evidence as to whether the prostitutes are dying of HIV infection or drug addiction. Cote d'Ivoire's Committee for the Fight Against AIDS has just started a project amongst prostitutes. In the milieu, it's true that there are a lot of problems with the drugs. We do a lot of attention to not block the work that we want to do with this group. They film cocaine. Et héroïne, n'est-ce pas? Oui. Ils le fument. Mais le, le, le hashish est la drogue la plus fumée. La cocaïne s'introduit sur le terrain de plus en plus. Mais l'héroïne, c'est très contrôlé quand même. Hein? C'est très contrôlé, mais vous savez, dans ce milieu, on ne peut pas tout maîtriser. Many prostitutes, like Alice from Ghana, are not convinced that it's sexually transmitted HIV that's killing them. They believe it's the drug addicts among them who are dying like the story of a Liberian friend who was diagnosed with AIDS, or SIDA, as the French call it. Drug. She took drug too much. So what happened? So, she was sick? Yes. <laughs> she spoke the drug didn't chop. Mm -hmm. No chop. So she went to the hospital? Yeah. And then what happened? And no half medicine. She died for the... She died? Why did she have no medicines? No half money. No money? No money. So she died? Yeah. And was that cedar, do you think? No. What was it? Uh, so the cedar, the doctor can tell me cedar. It's not cedar. You don't think it was cedar? No, no, no. What so do you maybe think it was? Drugs. These girls are consuming hard drugs in a smokable form, namely heroin, and cocaine in vilely adulterated versions for the first time in the history of Africa. And these drugs began to make their way into Abidjan in 1985-86. Uh, they are epidemic amongst certain classes of, of, of prostitutes right now, and these are the only girls that are getting sick. It looks like AIDS because these girls are wasted both by be, because of the direct effects of the drugs and because they use what little money they have uh, on drugs rather than on uh, f food. Investment in AIDS research in Abidjan has led to extensive testing for HIV. Projects like this one at a maternity clinic in Kumasi have shown a greater incidence of HIV in Africa than in the West. But what they don't seem to be showing so far is a frequent progression to AIDS. That's only the first of the puzzles. 80% of the HIV-positive mothers at this clinic are perfectly well. Jeanette, for example, who's visiting the clinic today for a regular checkup and blood test for her baby Anne. Donc, euh, de façon générale, euh, ces deux dames que nous venons de voir ce matin sont euh, asymptomatiques. Elles ne présentent pas de signes de sida. Mais le problème, 
c'est qu'on ne sait pas depuis quand elles ont été infectées. Là où nous sommes un peu gênés, c'est le fait que nombreuses parmi les femmes qui sont classées comme négatives remplissent ou du moins respectent la définition du sida. The study's director, Dr. Georgette Adjololo, has noticed that in the HIV-positive group, there are marked differences in progression to AIDS. Il n'y a pas de doute, le virus HIV est la cause du SIDA. Mais nous observons les différences dans la progression. Et avec ces observations, je peux penser que non seulement il y a le VIH, mais il y a certainement certains cofacteurs qui accélère l'évolution vers la maladie. Et peut-être d'autres facteurs comme des facteurs nutritionnels, des infections intercurrentes. Le virus n'est qu'un cofacteur, donc on peut peut-être penser que ne fait pas un sida qui veut, que beaucoup de personnes peuvent rencontrer le virus de l'immunodéficience humaine, mais parmi ceux-là, certains feront un sida, d'autres n'en feront pas. Donc il faut penser qu'il y a plusieurs facteurs que nous devons identifier pour améliorer notre compréhension de la maladie et améliorer aussi la manière dont nous voulons lutter contre celle-ci. The more research funding that's put into Africa, the greater the anomalies that emerge. Does HIV need triggers to turn into AIDS? Can you have AIDS without HIV? Can you live with HIV and not get AIDS? Some of these tests are so non-specific that 80%, 90% of the positives that are picked up are in fact false positives. They're reacting to antibodies that are not HIV specific. And when one realizes that these tests are being uh, pushed in a context in which we have to test as many people as possible, the inevitable outcome is that Africa the, the figures for uh, numbers of HIV infections in Africa will become wildly exaggerated and feed into a very, very deadly self-fulfilling prophecy. According to official figures, over a period of eight years in the United States, there's been a relatively stable estimate of one million HIV-positive people. The total number of reported AIDS cases is 250,000. In sub-Saharan Africa, as testing has increased, the estimated HIV positive total has risen to 6 million people, six times the US figures. But the total number of reported AIDS cases is only 129,000, half the US figure. The disparity between HIV and AIDS here and in the West is dramatic. But the single most obvious fact about AIDS and HIV statistics in Africa is that they're unreliable and virtually useless in charting the course of African AIDS. HIV figures are flawed because the tests are unreliable, giving too many false positives. And identifying AIDS through the Bangui case definition by looking for a combination of several symptoms is also flawed because so many other diseases get swept into the net. <laughs> 